When it comes to child stars that act as popular characters for their entire acting career, it's hard to imagine them as anyone else. Emma Watson is that exception. She evolved from her headstrong character in Harry Potter to the nonconformist, the outsider, the book nerd, the beauty, Belle. Hey guys, welcome back to Daily List. I'm Azalea Hart. Were you a fan of the Harry Potter movies? Was it hard for you at all to imagine Hermione Granger as a Disney princess? Well, I'll tell you one thing. As soon as I found out that Emma Watson was going to play Belle, I knew it was a perfect match. Before we get into the video, I want to know what your favorite book is. So comment down below and let me know. If it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Alright guys, so let's get into the list. Here are 12 reasons why Emma Watson was the perfect Belle. Emma Charlotte Duet Watson was born April 15th, 1990 in Paris just like Belle. Her parents divorced when she was young, at which point she moved to England with her mother. I wonder if she moved to a poor provincial town. Every morning just the same, since the morning that we came to this poor provincial town. Good morning, Belle. Did you guys know that the Harry Potter series was actually Emma Watson's first professional acting debut? But around the fifth movie, even though the Harry Potter films continued to be a huge box office draw, Emma wasn't sure she wanted to continue in the role. Could you imagine any other actress play Hermione? Maybe she just didn't want to be labeled as Hermione, the mudblood forever. Who knows? Leviosa, not Leviosa. This next fact I really admire Emma Watson for. Being a woman, being an actress, being offered a role in a major Disney live action film sounds like an automatic yes, right? Well, Emma actually said no when she was first offered the role of Cinderella. Emma said that she didn't know they were going to make Beauty and the Beast at the time that she turned down Cinderella. But when they offered her Belle, she just felt the character resonated with her so much more than Cinderella did. When it comes to Belle, Emma said that she is the kind of woman that she would want to embody as a role model given the choice. You must leave here. This castle is alive. She continued on saying that there is this kind of outsider quality that Belle has, and the fact that she had this really empowering defiance of what was expected of her. And I loved how she had this relationship with Beast where they were just toe to toe, and um, that to me just seemed like such a dynamic and interesting kind of relationship that I'd never seen before in a fairy tale. If there's one way that we can definitely connect Emma Watson and Belle, it's through their love of books. In 2016, Emma made headlines when people realized that she had been leaving books on New York subways. She tucks them between pipes, places them on benches, on top of emergency call boxes, all in hopes that New York commuters will pick them up and put down their phones. She credits Books on the Underground, which is a London-based organization that plants books on public transportation for travelers to discover. It sounds like a pretty good idea though, doesn't it? Leave it for someone else to find it and you pass on, you pass on the good deed, you pass on love. Just doing something nice for humanity, not expecting any recognition in return, I think you guys should do something nice for someone this week. What do you think? So I know we're talking all things Belle on this episode, but I would have thought that Harmony Granger would be the role of a lifetime for Emma Watson. But after watching the live action Beauty and the Beast, I gotta say, this was the role for her. Emma was offered the role of Mia in La La Land, which eventually went to Emma Stone. She turned it down as she wanted to focus on her role as Belle. Coincidentally, Ryan Gosling actually gave up the role of the Beast to star in La La Land. Ooh. Maturing from Harmony to Belle is a true coming of age story for Emma Watson. She said, when I finished the film, it kind of felt like I had made that transition into being a woman on screen. She says Belle is absolutely a Disney princess, but she's not a passive character. She's in charge of her own destiny. I just fell in love with Belle. She was this feisty young woman who spoke her mind and had all of these ambitions and was incredibly independent and wanted to see the world. In early 2014, UN Women, the United Nations Department of Gender Equality, contacted Emma about becoming an ambassador. I was appointed as Goodwill Ambassador for UN Women six months ago. And the more I've spoken about feminism, the more I have realized that fighting for women's rights has too often become synonymous with man-hating. 
With this, she was able to help the world focus on causes that she was passionate about, specifically He For She, which aims to get men to co-sign on feminist issues. We are very excited to be launching 10 by 10 by 10 to bring He For She into its next phase. What is the impact you can have? How, what, where, when, and with whom? We want to help. So just take this in with me. Belle is a young woman who people don't like because she loves to read. There's even a scene in the movie where Belle was trying to teach a young girl how to read and everybody got so mad that they broke her invention. This is a new Belle and a lot of it is Emma's design. In the original Disney movie, Belle is an assistant to her inventor father. Oh, I don't know. It's just that I'm not sure I fit in here. But here, she's a creator in her own right, developing a modern washing machine that allows her to sit and read. Emma even worked with costume designer Jacqueline Duran to incorporate pockets in her costume that are kind of like a tool belt. Another thing in the animated version, Belle is on and off horses, yet wearing a long dress and silk slippers. But our Emma didn't like that at all. So originally her dad in the original movie that was more of the kind of like crazy inventor. Yeah. But we actually thought that that story was brilliant for Belle because sure. it kind of explained why she didn't really fit into the village and why everyone thought she was a bit mad. Mm -hmm. And it also just really kind of like emphasized this thing that she was just sort of a bit ahead of, ahead of her time. Yeah. So she basically just wore toms and boots for the whole movie. <laughs> and we love it. When Emma went to university in 2009, many people don't even know that that was a time that she was actually contemplating leaving Hollywood for good. She felt that the fame was getting out of control and if she didn't do it now, then she probably wouldn't ever do it. Although she loves performing and telling stories, she considers her getting the role of Hermione Granger winning the lottery because she was only nine years old at the time, but she said as an adult, it only then dawned on her the life she chose. Like many people, she's had self-doubts. She said, I've often thought I'm so wrong for this job because I'm too serious, I'm a pain in the ass, I'm difficult, I don't fit. But as I got older, I realized, no, taking on those battles, the smaller ones and the bigger ones, is who I am. Like other major celebrities, Emma has finally found the courage to say no to selfie-seeking fans. She said it's the difference between being able to have a life or not. If someone takes a photograph of me and posts it, within two seconds they've created a marker of exactly where I am within 10 meters. They can see what I am wearing and who I'm with. She said that instead of the photo, she would offer an autograph or even a chat. She's offered to sit down with fans and answer every single Harry Potter fandom question they might have, but most of the time, if they don't get the photo, they don't bother. How crazy is that? What would you guys rather? Would you rather take a selfie with Emma Watson real quick? Or would you rather sit down with her and actually talk to her about life? And Harry Potter. On the bright side though, for kids, she doesn't say no to you. The first time Emma saw the final cut of Beauty and the Beast, she brought her mom and she also brought American feminist, journalist, and social and political activist Gloria Steinem, who became nationally recognized as a leader and a spokeswoman for the feminist movement in the late 1960s and early 1970s to a screening in London. So she wanted her mom's approval, but she needed Gloria Steinem's. Emma said, I couldn't care less if I won an Oscar or not, if the movie didn't say something that I felt was important for people to hear. We spent a lot of time figuring out, okay, what does Belle do and how does what she wears and the ways that she presents herself support what it is that she does. She wanted assurance that her portrayal of a Disney princess didn't conflict with the ideals of a feminist. In the film, the final scene, there's a grand ball, which of course would require the entire cast and a bunch of extras to waltz in period costumes for hours and hours. Kevin Klein, who plays Maurice, Belle's father, said after a long, long day, suddenly Pharrell Williams' song Happy comes on, blasting, and everyone just starts jumping around. He said it became kind of a rap party, really celebratory, and he asked, who did that? Can you guys guess? It was Emma. Ooh. All right guys, that's it for this episode of Daily List, 12 Reasons Why Emma Watson Was the Perfect Belle. If this episode didn't make you love Emma Watson even more, I don't know what will. If you love books just like Belle and just like Emma Watson, you should check out the blog boundbywords.org. I'll leave the link down below for you as well. That way you can find some more books to love. So do you have a favorite book? 
Comment below and let me know because I'm always looking for new ones to read too. If it's your first time here, hit that red button, subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and follow me on social media so you can see what I'm up to when I'm not here. I'll see you guys next time.